Well, hallelujah. Bang, bang. What's up, friends? Bless you, bless you, bless you. I'm very happy to see you. I have missed you all so much. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm barely holding on to uh, <laughs> uh, who I am in America, if that makes sense. But I have a very strong word to share with you today. And I'm very happy to see you. I feel really good. And uh, what's up, Stranger Things? I feel really good. I've probably had the most amount of sleep I've had in Asia probably in the last one and a half, two weeks. So I feel very good. I feel strong, even though my voice has been very hoarse. Uh, some would say horsey. But I'm excited to see you. Let me know where you're watching from. Give us some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall. I have a very uh, strong, important word to share today. And uh, really this word came up in my spirit as I was, um, oh, praise God, as I was um, finishing up the last two chapters of my new book called Millennial Prophets Arise. And just today I finished up the last two chapters, so praise God for that. Uh, now we're going to go into the editing process. But as I was uh, doing the audio voice recording for the ninth chapter called The Fear of the Lord, I just got so wrecked as I was preaching, teaching on the fear of the Lord. And as I was talking about the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the Lord caught me up in a vision and showed me the mercy seat. Now, I'm going to begin to preach and teach on the mercy seat of Jesus in a few minutes. But uh, that's where I'm at right now. So, <laughs> yes, Orlando, bless you. Hola, Hollywood, Cape Town. Good to see my South Africa friends. Rob Feller, love you. Minnesota, bless you. Martius, beautiful, bless you, bless you. Come on, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost as you begin to jump in here. Praise God. Glory to God. Let me know where you're watching from. Tag somebody. Share this on your wall. Give us some hearts and likes. Because today, I'm going to talk to you about the mercy seat of Jesus. Somebody say mercy. I'm going to talk to you about the mercy seat of Jesus. My goodness. But uh, like I said just this morning, uh, I guess I've kind of been on a writing frenzy, a writing hiatus. Uh, but this morning... I finished writing a foreword for my friend's book called Daddy Issues. So I wrote a foreword for my friend's book called Daddy Issues. And then I finished up the last two chapters of the book I'm working on writing right now called Millennial Prophets Arise. And uh, now that I finished up the last two chapters, uh, it's going to be in the editing process. So hopefully all the editing will be done in the next month at the most. And I'm excited because this book, I'm going to be releasing it probably um, in like October or November, December time. Millennial Prophets Arise. So exciting. Really excited about this book. And uh, if you are a millennial prophet, I want you to comment that to me. And you may not be in the millennial age gap or age group, but in this generation, God is raising up a new breed of prophets and prophetic voices in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're with me today, I want to say amen. I feel the fire of God so strong. Well, if you are wondering, where is Waldo? I don't know where Waldo is, but I know where I am. And I'm here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And just a little backdrop, backstory. I love Malaysia. I lived in this country for nearly three years, reaching the unreached people groups here. So I've lived here for nearly three years and uh, I have a lot of good friends, uh, family here in Malaysia. And uh, it's good to be back here because I've not been back here since 2019. So Malaysia is a very dear place for me. Of course, before I was in Singapore, 
And we had four days of glory in Singapore. Man, let me tell you, the crowd wasn't big, but the fire of God was so present and God moved so strong when we were in Singapore. So I'm excited. I'm coming back again to Singapore, Lord willing, in the month of November. And I'm bringing Steve Swanson with me to Singapore, Southeast Asia, which is fun because when we were in Hawaii, Steve Swanson was sharing how he had a dream many years ago that he was in Singapore. So that's another day, another time, another story. But I ministered four days in Singapore. Now I'm here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. On Sunday, I ministered twice at C3 Destiny Church. It was a great move of God, powerful. Then last night, I ministered at DUMC Myanmar, DUMC Myanmar, and tonight, which if you're in America, it's going to be tomorrow morning. You could watch the live broadcast. We're cross posting, we're going to broadcast live from my page. And these Burmese people here are so on fire. I love these beautiful Burmese people. These Burmese people, uh, these Burmese refugees are some of the most on fire, humble, meek, beautiful people you'll ever meet on earth. I'm telling you, I've been to 57 countries and um, these Burmese people are one of the most beautiful, humble, subservient people groups you'll ever meet in the world. Amen. So, uh, so, uh, but their service is midnight. So literally right here, right now, it's 12 noon in Malaysia, but literally 12 hours ago, I was ministering and their service is 11 PM to 1 30 AM. So think about that. Amen. For all of you who love your sleep, who are cranky and who are just lazy. Think about going to church at midnight and your main service is on a weekday, midnight time. It's because the Burmese people here in Malaysia, they go to work. So they, that's the time they have off. So I minister tonight again. So keep me in prayer. Last time my voice was really tight, but on the broadcast sounds good. But uh, tonight I'm gonna minister again. And uh, last night, there was probably maybe about almost 400 people. Lord willing, tonight we're believing for double. Amen. And then tomorrow, I minister at an all-day-long apostolic prophetic seminar here as well. Praise God. So that's just a little update about me. Well, I'm so excited. God bless you. Come on, give us some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall. Let's break the 100. Let's break the 150. Let's break the 200 mark today. Listen, I'm very excited. Of course, it's been a long road for me, long journey. I'm on the third leg of this summer tour. And the first leg, I was in Polynesia, went to Samoa and went to Fiji. Then the second leg, I did a conference in Hawaii with Prophet Charlie and Bryn Champ and with Steve Swanson. Now I'm in my third leg in Southeast Asia. And I went to Singapore, now I'm here in Malaysia. And next week I'll be in Indonesia. And I do have some days of rest in Bali, which I'm so looking forward to. Somebody say hallelujah. But like I said, we're having some powerful times of ministry. But just earlier, I finished the last two chapters of my new book titled Millennial Prophets Arise. Because us as millennials, as a younger generation, it it's almost seems like there's been a damper or, you know, just a throwing out the baby out with the bathwater in terms of the prophetic. Right now, I know certain online influencers and certain people with large followings like to dumb down the prophetic, but the devil is a liar. The prophetic is one of the most important weapons in your arsenal that God has given and equipped the church of Jesus Christ. So we need the prophetic today more than ever before. In fact, the Bible says in the last days, his spirit will be poured out on all flesh 
And the Bible says your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So prophecy is the end times language. So we need more prophets and prophetic voices to be equipped and to be mature and to rise up um, in the prophetic voice and mantle and authority in Jesus' name. So as a young person, younger, I'm 32, I'm passionate about seeing the new breed rise up um, and a new breed of apostles and prophets. Can I get an amen? And that's one of my mandates before the next Corona Bologna lockdown comes here on earth. Amen. Uh, but I want to talk to you about the mercy seat of Jesus. I want to talk to you about the mercy seat. Because as I was finishing the last two chapters on my book, Millennial Prophets Arise, the ninth chapter is called The Fear of the Lord. And man, Jesus, as I was uh, writing, recording this chapter, I got so wrecked as I was talking about the fear of the Lord. I got so wrecked. Jesus, there it is. There it comes. I got so wrecked. And as I was talking about the fear of the Lord, I got caught up into the mercy seat. And the Lord caught me up into the mercy seat. And listen, I'm going to talk about this word right now. But listen, in the last two weeks, the seer realm and the visionary realm has increased in my life. Now, it may be because of the impartation from being around Prophet Charlie. It may be because it's a season I'm in or season we are in. Or number three, it might be because I'm actually intentionally pursuing that realm a little bit more than I usually do. All right, which is a good thing. She caught up, but I'm here and I've been receiving more visions and encounters in the last two weeks. So that's just a personal side note that I'm sharing with you now. But this morning, as I was ministering on the fear of the Lord for my ninth chapter, for my uh, book, Millennial Prophets Arise, as I was ministering on the fear of the Lord, I got caught up into the mercy seat. I got caught up in the mercy seat. And I want to talk to you about the mercy seat of Jesus. Because I believe it's time for the mercies of God to manifest. And I need you to hear me, church. Give me some hearts and likes in this place. I believe right now the clock is ticking where the hand of mercy will be released. What does that mean? I believe... We are in a limited time right now where the hand of mercy is going to be available. But in due time, soon and very soon, the hand of God, the mercy of God is going to be less and less available. What does that mean? Does that mean God is going to be less merciful? Does that mean God is not going to be merciful? No, he is abundantly, infinitely limitlessly merciful. That's who he is. The Bible says in Exodus, he shows mercy on whom he chooses to show mercy. I pray God will show you mercy today in Jesus' name. And in fact, you tapping into this broadcast, you being here live right now, that is a sign of God's mercy. Can I get an amen? You being alive today, that is a sign of God's mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But I believe the time of mercy that window of opportunity, the clock is ticking and it's running out. Repent now before it's too late. Turn before you burn. Give your life to Jesus before it's too late. I'm talking to you right now, friends. The hand of mercy is extended out to you right now and you need to get right with Jesus before it's too late. But in this encounter, I was caught up into the mercy seat. Now, first... Let's go to the Word of God. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God. I have two main passages of Scripture that I want to refer to right now. If you're with me today, I want you to say amen. And continue to give us some hearts and likes and share this on your wall. Exodus 25, 17. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and one and a half cubits wide. You shall make a mercy seat. Now, 
real quick, what is a mercy seat? The mercy seat is where the glory of God sat and dwelled in. The mercy seat was the prime, was the prime, uh, was the prime artifact or was the prime item in the whole temple. You have the outer courts, the inner courts, the Holy of Holies. And really the Holy of Holies is the kavod or the atmosphere of the mercy seat. So the mercy seat, of course, is where Jesus the King would be seated. The mercy seat is where the presence of the Father, the glory of the Father, the manifest presence of God will literally be seated on the mercy seat. All right. So literally it is on earth as it is in heaven. It is Jesus' throne here in the earth realm. The mercy seat is where Jesus is and was seated here in Israel or here on the earth realm. If you're following me, just nod your head yes. It is coming before the most holy king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, is coming before Jesus Christ. So the mercy seat, say mercy, the mercy seat, my goodness, is the throne or the seat of Jesus. I'm convinced that the mercy seat is also the throne of grace, as we see in the book of Hebrews. I believe the mercy seat is also the throne of grace. The seat of mercy is a throne. The seat of mercy is a throne. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. But the mercy seat, of course, is made of gold. And the mercy seat is on top of a box, otherwise known as a coffin, or a treasure chest, come on somebody. And in the coffin or the treasure chest, the box, are three items. Aaron's rod that budded, blossomed, and bloomed. The jar of manna that never ran out, never deteriorated. And in number three, it stands for the, the Ten Commandments, the tablets of stone. So these three holy relics are in the coffin and on top of that is the mercy seat. All right, I want you to follow me. On top of the mercy seats is, of course, the two cherubim, the gold cherubs, right? In fact, it's the cherub that forms the mercy seat, all right? It's the angels that are God's seat. I want you to follow me. These type of angels called the cherubim and the cherub are chariot angels, okay? Cherubs are a specific type of angels and they are chariots, all right? And that's why you see in Genesis, I'm, I'm teaching real deep right now. That's why you see in Genesis after the fall, there were cherub angels that were guarding the garden, amen? Because these type of angels are the ones who guard. They're the ones who protect the holy things of God, all right? Uh, so these cherubs, these angels form the mercy seat of Jesus. And Yeshua, the glory of God, the kavod of his presence, is seated or is nooked in between inside the cherubim, okay? Inside of these angels, all right? If you're following me so far, just nod your head yes. Hallelujah. Give us some hearts and likes or share this on your wall. In Jesus' name. So on top of the mercy seat, on the bottom of the mercy seat, excuse me, is the three relics. The jar of manna, the rod of Aaron, shoo, and the Ten Commandments. What does that stand for? King, priest. Yes, it's the Ark of the Covenant. Thanks very much. The Ark of the Covenant. These three relics, the Ark of the Covenant, stands for king, priest, and prophet. Okay? King, priest, and prophet. It could also stand for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. So these three holy relics, the Ark of God's Covenant, and remember Ark in Hebrew means treasure chest, coffin, or box, okay? I've studied this deeply, well not as deep as I could, but that's the same word Ark of Noah's Ark, okay? In Hebrew, in the Old Testament, Noah's Ark is a treasure chest or a coffin. What is a coffin for a body? The body of Jesus the body of Yeshua, 
Rebesete, and that ark is the same Hebrew word as the ark of God's covenant. If you're following me, just nod your head yes, give me some hearts and likes. So on top of the ark of the covenant is the mercy seat, is the cherub, and is the glory of Jesus Christ. If you're following me, just nod your head yes, amen. So why is this important? Because I believe God is extending mercy. And God is saying, come boldly before the throne of grace to receive mercy in every time of need. Uh, I want to go to one more verse here, all right? One more verse, and then I'm going to continue with my teaching here, praise God. Here in Hebrews 9, 5. Hebrews 9, 5. The Bible says, and above it were the cherubim of glory. Isn't it interesting? Overshadowing the mercy seat. Above it were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. But of these things we cannot speak now in detail. Amen. So it's the overshadowing of glory. The cherubim of glory overshadows the mercy seat. Wherever there's a shadow of glory, there's mercy. Wherever there's mercy, there's glory. Because His kindness leads us to repentance. The Bible says His mercy triumphs over judgment. So wherever there's mercy, there's glory. Wherever there's a shadow of glory, there's mercy. Some say, preach Dr. Ben. So glory and mercy goes hand in hand. The mercy seat goes hand in hand with the shadow of the glory of God. It's the glory of God to forgive, to release, to heal. It's the glory of God to give mercy. It's the glory of God, our King, our Father, our Heavenly Father, to give mercy in Jesus' name. So earlier this morning, I was caught up into the mercy seats. And I believe the Lord began to speak to me saying, find mercy, gain mercy while you still have time. Seek the Lord while you still have time. Seek the Lord while he may be found, as the scripture says. And I believe we're in a season right now where God is saying many of you are crying out for mercy. Many of you are crying out for grace. You're crying out for an answer, for a word. You're crying out for deliverance, for salvation, for help from the Lord Jesus. And I believe right now God is saying the mercy seat is available for those who humble themselves and will seek the very face of God. The mercy seat is available for you. Can I get amen? The mercy seat is available, but you must approach the Lord with holy fear and reverence. Someone say mercy. Now let's define mercy real quick. Mercy is not receiving what you deserve. So when a judge grants you mercy in the courthouse, that means you deserve death and punishment. But the judge was merciful, therefore he reduced your sentence, or I feel the Lord, or he canceled the indictment against President Trump. So because God is merciful, because of the blood of Jesus, the propitiation of the perfect lamb of God, the sacrifice of that perfect blood, of that perfect body, that DNA of Jesus. Because Jesus paid the price. Now, the king, the judge, the father will forever be merciful towards his children. He will forever extend his hand of mercy to you. Can I get an amen? Now, why is this important? Because you and I, we deserve death. We deserve to be distressed, to be in financial debt. We deserve hell. We deserve to be separated, ostracized, castrated from the Lord Jesus Christ. We deserve uh, piety. That's what we deserve. But Jesus says, I am going to give you mercy. And I'm not going to give you what you deserve. I am going to reduce your sentence. Come on, somebody. In fact, I'm not only going to reduce your sentence, I'm going to nullify every indictment 
in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to nullify and I'm going to exonerate you in Jesus' name. Every false word, every word curse, every slander word of accusation is being overturned in the name of Jesus. And God is saying, seek me while I will be found. Somebody say mercy. You see, mercy is giving us what we do not deserve. Okay, or is not giving us, excuse me, mercy is not giving us what we deserve. In fact, somebody just needs to write that in the comment. Mercy is defined as we gain what we do deserve, what we deserve. Grace is receiving what we don't deserve. Mercy, we do not receive what we deserve. Grace is we receive what we do not deserve. I hope you get the play or the medley of words in that in Jesus' name. The blind man cried out, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The blind man began to shout and cry, have mercy on me, have mercy. The high priest once a year would go into the Holy of Holies, make propitiation, would sprinkle the blood at the altar and would do the ritual so that there would be mercy from the Lord to forgive the whole nation of Israel from their sins for that one year. Hallelujah. And it wouldn't just cover, but eventually in Jesus, it would fully remove in Jesus' name. Once a year, my friends, the high priest once a year would go into the Holy of Holies, come before the, the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat, the throne of grace, and will receive enough mercy once a year that would replenish for the whole entire year. Hear me now. You and I do not just have access once a year, but we have access every day, every moment, all the time to receive mercy. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Every day, every morning, every moment, there's fresh mercies. Somebody say mercy. You and I, we have been given access to receive, retrieve mercy from our great high priest, Jesus Christ, from the ark of God's covenant, from the glory, from the kavod of his presence. But how do you receive that? Here's the key. Listen to me. How do you receive mercy? You get into his presence. You get into his glory. You receive mercy by getting entered, by entering into his presence. Now, what does mercy look like? It could look like healing. It could look like a miracle, a suddenly. It could look like an answer prayer. It could look like the love of God, the joy of the Lord, an answer from God. Mercy could look like salvation, deliverance. Mercy could look like you being filled with love and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Mercy could look like all sorts of things. But I believe right now, God is saying, seek mercy. Look out for the mercy seat. Because I believe the mercy seat is going to dawn upon God's people in this season. Hear me now. I believe, once again, you know the tabernacle. The temple was a state put property building location. But the tabernacle was a traveling tent with the mercy seat. Wherever the tabernacle of Moses went, the mercy seat would permeate. Come on, somebody. Wherever you go, the mercy seat manifests. I believe the mercy seat is going to manifest amongst God's people. Literally. I believe the mercy seat of God is going to manifest in the nations of the earth. And the mercy of God is going to be so sweet and so beautiful that it's going to shock the world. It's going to scare the world. Wait, wait. I cursed you. I hit you. I hate you. I made fun of you. And what I deserve is to get slapped back from you. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, cheek for cheek. But you're going to turn the other cheek. Now that's mercy. The world is going to be in shock and in awe of the Lord because of the mercy of Jesus. All of God's people say amen. Now the mercy seat 
is a technology of God, okay? So I won't say technology. The mercy seat is a technology of God. Now, what does technology mean, okay? The definition of, let me, let me get out the, all right, technology. Shut up. If you're enjoying this today, I want you to say amen. The definition of technology is the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes, all right? I want to say the application of knowledge. So technology is the application, how knowledge is applied, okay? So the Ark of God's Covenant, the mercy seat, is God's technology. God's technology of what? On earth as it is in heaven. For you to experience the encounter of the Lord. For you to receive from the Holy Ghost. It's a technology, all right, for you to receive from heaven above. Now, the mercy seat is a technology. And, of course, many nations and kingdoms of the earth have their own evil, corrupt, deformed forms of technology. But it's the throne of grace, the mercy seat of Jesus, that terrifies the world. It's going to terrify the world. And the fear of the Lord is returning back to the church. I want you to hear this, okay? I'm bringing this to a close. I finished my book, Millennial Prophets Arise. Now I'm in the editing process. But chapter nine, I began to minister on the fear of the Lord. And Papa Paul Cain, one of the prophetic fathers of the Kansas City Prophets, before he passed into glory, he had a major encounter and he shared that the spirit of the fear of the Lord, which is one of the seven spirits, as you see in Isaiah 11, the spirit of the fear of the Lord came into the room and God began to minister to Papa Prophet Paul Cain that the fear of the Lord is returning back to the church. The fear of the Lord is coming back to America. The fear of God the awesome terror of God's power. Not just, oh, I respect you, Lord, or I honor you. No, that's one form of fear. But the fear of the Lord is a terrifying, dreadful, fearful power of Jesus, okay? The fear of the Lord is returning back to the church. And as I was writing this chapter, as I was Releasing this chapter, the Lord began to catch me up in the mercy seat. And the Lord shared with me that his mercy, which leads us to repentance, his kindness which leads us to repentance, but mercy triumphs over judgment. But it's the mercy of God that will bring terror to the nations. I want you to catch this. The fear of the Lord is returning, but it's his mercy that's stronger than judgment. And his mercy is what's gonna terrify the world. He's so good, so kind, so loving, so humble, so meek, so gracious, so generous, so forgiving, so mer he's so merciful that it's gonna shock and terrify the world. The world is not gonna be terrified at the Lord because He's a mean, cruel, judging God who, John, 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 John. No, he's so kind that that unbelievable, unfathomable, incomparable manifestation of the love of Jesus, that is what's gonna convict the world of sin, righteousness, and the judgment to come. All of God's people say, amen. I believe the fear of the Lord is returning. Repent now before it's too late. Give your life to Jesus before it's too late. I saw the scepter of the Lord being extended out to you. And I saw the availability for you to access his mercy seat. That availability, that time is running out. Friends, we are in, we are in a very crucial decade. And in my earlier years, 
In my earlier years, I defied any theology or rhetoric or commentary concerning the end times drawing near. More and more I am convinced, more and more I am convinced that this decade is going to be one of the most crucial decades on earth. And this decade is the decade of all decades. This decade, my friends, is such an acceleration of the end times that I have such a fear talking about it, thinking about it. But his mercy seat is available for you today. Do you need mercy? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, come boldly before the throne of grace in every time of need so that you will receive mercy and help in Jesus' name. His scepter of grace is extended out to you right now. Do you need mercy? Do you need mercy, my friends? Do you need to receive what you do not deserve? I prophesy you are about to receive in this month of August fresh mercies, new mercies, new encounters. You're going to receive such an outpouring and flooding of the Father's gifts and blessings in this Hebrew month of Av, which is the month of Manachem Av, the Father's comfort, the Father's gifts, the Father's blessings, the Father's favor. Get ready for the Father to pour out fresh mercy in your life. You might be crying out like the blind man, son of David, son of David, have mercy on me. Listen, you got to cry out. You got to get desperate. You got to call out to the Lord and call out for the mercies of Jesus before it's too late. Turn to the Lord. Give your life to Jesus. Get right with the Father. Come before him and receive fresh mercy. Come before him and receive a fresh and a new in Jesus' name. I believe this technology of the mercy seat is coming and as it manifests, there's going to be such a manifestation of the demonic and such a shaking in the heavenlies and in the earth because the mercy of God is going to shut up your haters. They say you don't deserve it. You're absolutely right. But the mercy seat is on my side. They say you shouldn't be in ministry. You're absolutely right. But the mercy seat favors this blessed child. They say you shouldn't be alive. You shouldn't be. You're, you're absolutely right. But the mercy seat speaks louder than the judgment of any sin, evil that I've committed or omitted or am about to. His mercy triumphs over judgment. Do you need mercy? The throne of grace the scepter of grace, he has extended his hand of mercy towards you, his beloved. If you need mercy right now, I want you to say amen. And I want you to lift up your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Because I want to pray for you that you would find, receive, experience the mercy seat of God. And in fact, let me take it a step further. You can actually be seated with the Lord on the mercy seat. There's a verse, let me just go to it now. Praise God. If you're enjoying this, say amen. Revelation 3.21. Praise God. If you're with me today, say amen. Revelation 3.21. The Bible says, The one who conquers, I will grant him the right to sit with me on my throne. As I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. I want you to catch this. If you conquer, you will be given the access, granted the right to sit with Jesus on his throne. Jesus on his throne you can sit with him on the throne of Jesus. Even as Jesus conquered and sat with our father on the father's throne. 
So hear me now. Jesus conquered and is now seated with the Father on the Father's throne. If you conquer, you can be seated with Jesus on Jesus' throne, which is the Father's throne, which is the mercy seat. If you conquer, if you believe as a child of God, son and daughter of the Most High, then you also can be seated with Jesus, with the Father on the mercy seat. To administrate mercy, chesed, the love, the kindness, the forgiveness, the power of God all across the earth. I want you to say mercy. I want you to say mercy. Lift up your hands, give me some hearts and likes, share this on your well, Father, I ask you, show mercy to your children. Let mercy be given to your servants. God, I ask you, as the Bible says, you will be merciful to whom you choose to be merciful. God, I ask you, would you be merciful? Show us your glory. Show us your mercy. God, we need your hand. Listen, some of you are dealing with something impossible right now. Maybe it's a mental torment. Maybe it's a mental anguish in your soul. Maybe there's a financial issue. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills. You know, number of people keep messaging me or commenting, you know, about financial difficulty, financial difficulties. Maybe you're struggling with an infirmity, with a disease. Find mercy, receive mercy right now in Jesus' name. His mercy is greater than all of those things. If you need to receive the mercy of God, if you need to receive the extension of God's help and mercy, kindness and love, that's you lift up your hands. Because I believe the Lord is about to eradicate, exonerate and terminate and reduce the sentence, the indictment, the charges, the punishment, the consequences, the penalties, the fruits of our action. God is about to nullify and exonerate and his mercy is about to triumph over judgment in Jesus' name. Somebody shout mercy. The mercy of God triumphs over judgment. And I declare right now, you will find mercy in Jesus' name. Just come up higher, come in, come before God and receive his mercies, which are new every morning. Lift up your hands, Lord, I thank you, bless your people. I pray right now that your blood will cover them. And I ask you that you would provide, you would bless, you would heal, you will justify. I hear God saying, I'm about to justify and vindicate and honor you in Jesus' name. This is a season of recompense and payback. This is a season of double honor. This is a season where God is about to honor his children. So Father, thank you for your mercy seat. We praise you for your blood. And thank you that we do not get what we deserve, but we receive what we do not deserve which is blessings, healings, gifts, miracles, financial breakthroughs, the presence of God, visions, dreams, encounters. We get to be your child, your loved one, your beloved. So Father, thank you that this is a season of manifesting the mercy seat of Jesus. And all the God's people say amen, amen, and amen. Give the Lord a mighty clap. Give us some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall. Praise God. If you receive today, I want you to say hallelujah. And I pray right now that you are actually caught up in the mercy seat of God right now. I pray that this encounter, as it's been released, prophesied, and ministered over you, it's now the reality, the bubble, the atmosphere that you are now in, in Jesus' name. Remember, how do you receive mercy? Get into his presence. Get into the presence of the Lord and receive new mercies in the mighty name of Jesus. And all of God's people say, amen. Listen, 
I have one more session here tonight in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, DOMC Myanmar. Uh, we will broadcast a live cross post on my page here. And that's going to literally be in about 11 hours from right now, 11 hours from right now. And then tomorrow I minister all day at an apostolic prophetic seminar. That's going to be awesome. I love you all. I'm here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. All is well. I'm sure I'm going to have a good nap this afternoon. Amen. Uh, but I love you. Good to see you. I miss you all. 7M Glory Equip, Open Heavens World, Bam Fam. All of my friends, followers, supporters here on Facebook, on social media lands. I love you. I miss you. But we are seeing an incredible harvest of God's presence and of souls in Jesus' name. The harvest is ripe and Jesus is winning. Good to see a prophet, Luis. I want to say one more thing before I close. You know, I've, I've really been thinking about this the last week. But we're winning, guys. The kingdom is expanding. Like, I know there's a lot of evil, like California just passed a stupid bill, you know, trying to decriminalize anal and oral sex with minors. Just evil, Sodom, Gomorrah, pedophile atrocities, right? And we know like across the world, there's a demonic agenda. There is such an evil one world demonic agenda that the devil, the antichrist spirit system is trying to accelerate. But in midst of all the false indictments against Trump and Mike Pence, the big rhino with the big, uh, with the big fruit fly on his silver head. Uh, but in midst of all of this nonsense has taken place, you know and I know Jesus is on the throne and Jesus is winning. And I'm very encouraged to see many of my friends in the, in the Lord, associates of the gospel, people I, I see from a distance or I, I'm close, tight knit with up close. Like God's winning guys. The kingdom is being expanded. The gospel is being preached. Demons are being cast out. The lame are walking, blind are seen. The good news is being preached. And so like, I'm so encouraged because people are doing tent revivals. Nations are getting blitzed and blazed with the fire of God. We're seeing souls come to Jesus. Like it, it blesses me, honestly, to see the kingdom winning. And we're winning, guys. God is moving all across the earth. And we're winning. And I'm so blessed, encouraged to see that... You know, we're winning. We're all on the same team. Amen. So anyways, that's my little rant. Bless you, love you. Um, consider sharing this on your wall. Give this page a like and a follow. If you enjoy these prophetic teachings and impartations, where this page is strictly prophetic, okay? We are a prophetic page. We are an apostolic ministry. And if you enjoyed this broadcast, this content, Consider sharing this video and as well giving us a like and a follow. Pray about subscribing. Amen. Becoming a monthly partner uh, as we take this gospel worldwide through social media and in person. Amen. And I'm not a social media evangelist. I am a genuine man of God that will go into the trenches and lay hands on people. That personal touch. Amen. And as well, uh, consider joining my online mentorship group called 7M Glory Equip. Okay, let me give you the, uh, the link here. But I do have an online mentorship group. We just got one person from Singapore and another from Malaysia join, which makes me very happy. But if you join 7M Glory Equip, which is my online mentorship group, then number one, you join a private telegram group with all of the mentees. We are a beautiful, tight-knit family and every member of 7M is powerful, beautiful, and incredible for Jesus. Number two, we will have at least two private Zooms a month. All right, if you join 7M Glory Equip, you will have two private Zooms with me and our group. And number three, you will have greater access and mentorship with me, by me, in Jesus' name. And number four, of course, you get discounts, promos, 
on all of our conferences, online events, resources, etc. So do consider joining 7M Glory Equip. If you want to be mentored by me, if you want to grow into things of God, and if you want to upgrade your spiritual life with Jesus. God bless you, friends. Follow me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and here on Facebook. Get ready for the manifestation of Christ's mercy seats.